Live. We are live. Welcome back, Let's Rabbi go. Akiva. Welcome so, back, Rabbi Akiva. Yeah, and everyone else. Okay, it's uh, so good to be back here schmoozing with you. This, this week's episode, I'm, I'm very excited. You know, coming off of Mo Mernick, a tremendous innovator, we're bringing on Orly Waba, who has, who has just an incredible story and really use her, use her, her past to propel her forward in her future. And she started multiple nonprofit organizations. So we're going to hear from her later today and discuss Abraham's legacy, who's sponsoring tonight's tonight schmooze. Um, it is a social network for prayer. So I'm, I'm very excited. I know, I know. What's that? I mean, that's amazing. Like, yeah, that talk, talk about true innovation, right? Like, where would you think about mixing social networking? A prayer would not be the first place that I would think about. So beautiful. Yeah, I very excited. All the time. I have it on my phone right here. You talk. I'm pulling it up. Okay. Uh, I'll have to think of something to say because it just comes so unnaturally to me. I feel like up with something. Check that out. Boom. You know, it's just the triangle that like disappears, right? Like, here we go. Whatever. Okay, all right. Okay, she's gonna explain us later. Okay, great. Uh, Rabbi Kiva, welcome back. It's been quite a week here in Israel, not so much because national lockdown, but in in America, um, there's just so much to really unwrap, and we're really not even gonna get into the main events that everybody's talking about. But but um, I feel like in a couple years from now, about, are you about, like, what were they talking about? No, I, like, think, I think what you were talking about was a lot of people probably noticed this, but um, it was order. The Pentagon has been ordered to declassify any information they know about UFOs in the next six months. This is a true story. OK, this is an actual fact. You can Google it. This is happening today in America within the next 180 days. OK, Daniel, I don't other important things ha happen, too. But that is very important. That wasn't at all what I was speaking about. But I'm, I'm not even close. I'm not even close. Also, really, they're going to said my part. I'm done. You're, you're they're going to declassify all this information about things that are just going to scare people. No, it's not going to happen. Keep keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. Okay. Um, uh, a couple things. You know, when we talk about making a difference, there's there's this idea that you need to achieve the highest echelons of society. That you need to you need to be um, a Sheldon Adelson and you need to you need to be like a, a Barack Obama or President Trump, depending on what what side of the aisle you uh, you're more affiliated with. You know, but but I think this idea, you know, coming off of our show with Mo Mornick Mo Mernick last week, Mo was discussing partners in Torah. This idea of using technology to bring people together and and these these uh, partner learning sessions. So after our show, people message me saying, I signed up for partners in Torah for, for, because, I heard from, because I heard from Mo and I didn't know this platform existed. That's making a difference. And, and to be able to focus for, it doesn't matter what else you do in your life. We all have the ability, just to, even a little bit of time in our day to commit ourselves. And one of the things that was, I, we've been speaking a lot about Sheldon Adelson, unfortunately, Baruch Dayan MS. Um, that that right. Sheldon Adelson, regardless of what you thought of his politics, committed himself to the Jewish people and to our homeland Israel. And we can all do that. You don't need to be a billionaire uh, casino magnate to to really take on a position of making a difference and caring about the Jewish world. So, and I think that's really what the schmooze is all about. You know, meeting people like Mo, like Orly like Nachum Siegel, and they all found their niche. They all found how they're giving back to the community and how they relate to the community. And I think that's what, what we can all do. I don't think you need to be, you don't need to be worth a lot of money. We can all start today, take on a different role, and maybe that could be Abraham's legacy. Which we'll hear about really soon. Let's do that, let's do that now. Right now, right now. Yeah. All right, without further ado. Yeah, we're so, we're so excited to welcome Orly Waba. Um, tremendous speaker, entrepreneur, innovator, you name it, she does it. And uh, welcome, Orly, to the schmooze. Hey, guys, how's everything? It's great to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for coming on. It's so good to, so good to have you. I know we're, we're about to go into another lockdown, so there's definitely a lot to be done here in Israel before we're confined to our houses. But thank you so much for, uh, for taking the time. There's always time to schmooze, right? That's what they say. There if is all that. Yet, then they should be saying it now. Uh, Orly Waba, like we mentioned earlier on the show, uh, created a viral video with over 100 million views. And what she doesn't know is that 99 million of those were me and Daniel. But <laughs> we're really curious about all those other million people that watched that. Can you tell us a little bit about 
what inspired you to make this video? Uh, well, obviously, uh, we, we shared a little bit about it beforehand, uh, and we'll post a link for everybody to watch it. Can you tell us, like, what, where did that come from, and how did you do that? So I tell you, I mean, really, this the concept of kindness has really been part of my life story ever since I was a four-year-old kid that, you know, was dreaming and changing the world. And so it was always something I wanted to do. I remember being a young kid and feeling very much in my heart that there was something I was meant to do to bring people together in the world. I didn't know how and I didn't know what, but what I did know is I knew why. And so through various uh, pieces of my puzzle that came together, I ended up being a teacher. I was a teacher for seven incredible years in Yeshiva Flatbush in Brooklyn. Sure. Loved every single second of it. They were really the most transformative years of my life. And the concepts of kindness, compassion, empathy, these were things I was implementing into my classroom on a daily basis. A lot of the, you know, I guess the, the passion behind why I went into teaching and really why I went into creating the film that's connected to the organization I started called Life Fest Inside stemmed from my adolescent years, to be honest, uh, when I was 15 years old. You know, sometimes the, the hardest experiences that we go through end up becoming the, the experiences that really shape us and that make us become the people that we are. Sure. And the hardest experiences push us in a sense to, to tap into something that we wouldn't necessarily have tapped into otherwise. Uh, to make a long story short, because I don't want to keep us too long, is my in my sophomore year of high school i went into i fell into a very 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 dark depression after there was a fire in my house and my family lost uh, everything overnight i mean everything oh, sorry oh my god sorry we did not know that. I, I tell you guys um you know looking back it was probably the greatest gift that god did for me to be honest wow now when i was going through that it didn't feel that way i mean i it was very hard. I always had a, you know, I always believed that everything happens for the best. But when you see your family, your family unit, your parents break down, uh, it does something to you that's very hard to honestly describe in words. And so, you know, I kept my emotions from my family. My friends didn't know to say to say to me. So, you know, but you can only keep your emotions in so long until one day it just sort of broke me down. I went to bed one night and just sort of didn't wake up the next day. I fell into a very, very, very dark depression. When I say dark, I mean I mean like suicidal dark. It was a very scary time. And I was home from school for several months. During that time, you know, not one person came to visit. Not, not one person called to see if I was okay. And that made me feel like, well, if I wasn't here tomorrow, would it make a difference to anybody? And felt like the answer was no. I was angry at the whole world. I was angry at my family. I was angry at God. I, but I was all, God was the only one I was talking to. I was screaming at God, but he was the only one I was talking to. And the truth is, even though I had a very close relationship with God prior to that, I didn't know what close meant until coming out of that experience. Because I always say, you know, Hashem saw me at my worst points. He saw me at my lowest points. And he loved me anyway. And he bet on me anyway. And honestly, that gave me the courage to better myself. But I was home from school for several months. I wanted to quit school. I wanted to just drop out. I was forced to go back, but I wasn't the same kind of kid. I was that like loner kid in the corner. And then one not so special day as I was getting up to go to school, I was in the bathroom and I was washing up and I was looking at myself in the mirror. And I say, look, I was really looking at myself. And the scariest thing happened. I didn't see that four-year-old kid, that four-year-old Orly looking back at me. It was like, it's like someone took her. It's like she was gone. And that scared me more than anything. And it was in that moment, 15 years old, that I made a promise to myself that day. And it was a promise that guided me to my years teaching. It was a promise that guided me to creating that film and that guided me to the work I'm doing with Life Vest Inside and that's guiding me every morning. And it was a promise to be there for people the way I wish somebody would have been there for me and to see people the way I wish somebody would have seen me. And that promise is something I, I, you know, I've really, I've really lived by. And what I found by, you know, within, after a couple of years of high school, I was in my senior year and we were, you know, I was a very shy kid. I wouldn't, I would never talk. I was the kid that wouldn't even raise their hand in class. I, I gotta say, I have to pause you. I'm this, I, we didn't know obviously any of this. This is wow story, it's blowing my mind. I was also extremely shy growing up and like, I never, never forget about the shmoos. I would never talk to anybody. The story, keep going. It's just, wow, it's, it's just 
Keep I going. was a shy kid. I'm telling you, people now can't get me to stop talking. But I was the shyest kid in the room. And in my senior year, sitting in a circle, talking about obstacles on a seminar, I did something I never did before. I raised my hand. And I had something to contribute. And the craziest thing happened. Kids that I used to be so super intimidated from were listening to me and coming to me afterwards and asking me for advice. And what I found is that the more I gave, the more I began to heal. And the more I gave, the more I healed. And I became like just obsessed in love with this concept and this idea of giving. But giving, giving from a place of strength, not from a place of weakness. Giving should never feel like you're being depleted. And if it does, you need to stop giving right away and turn the giving onto yourself. Because oftentimes when we talk about giving, oh yeah, giving is good, giving is good. In anything in life, there needs to be balance. So if giving makes you become feeling like depleted, and that you don't feel like you're actually receiving, it's a, it could be a very, very dangerous giving. For me, those couple of years of going through high school gave me the greatest opportunity in the world. It gave me a chance to fall in love with Orly for Orly. And when I did that and I came to recognize and understand my value, suddenly now the giving was coming from a positive place. And that's really why I went into teaching, to be able to help my students see the beauty in themselves so they can see it in others. Because only once a person loves themselves, can they truly begin to love others and embrace others for who they are? And kindness, kindness is the greatest and strongest tool to empower people to understand their value. And for me, I just wanted to show people the ability that kindness has to go from one person to the next, this fluidity. That's why the film is shot really in one shot. There are no cuts. It's all in one shot to show that when you put something out there in the world, you never know where it's going to lead. And every one of those scenes that you saw in that film, so most people don't know this, every scene is based on a real life experience that I personally went through. There's a huge backstory behind oh, wow. every character. Yeah. Wow. Oh my God. Hey, now, what do you think? Too much to think right now, we'll process later, but I wanna, I really wanna, I wanna jump in early um, for, for especially students watching now, you know, we're living in isolated times, you know, the word quarantine, the word in Hebrew, we say it like bidud is a, is a lifestyle here, you know, for, for those people who they are experiencing that, that closed off component, they might not like who they're become, they don't have their support system around them to keep them going. What coming from your story and turning it into a life of, of purpose, of giving, of, of making it better, what advice would you have for all the students watching now? Um, to, to just really take on, take on this new mentality. What spark can you give them? And what should they be thinking right now? What I would say is this, you know, I, I just put out a video just last week, you know, with the changing of the year to 2021. And I said, isn't it interesting that before 2020, right? Before 2000, 2020, when you heard it, what did you think about before the year? what did you think about guys? Oh, uh, before the year happened? Before the year, what do you think about when I say 2020? What comes to your mind right away? Face crap. Turning the page. Turning around, like the future is here. Perfect vision. Oh, totally. What, nice. the eye doctor. <laughs> <laughs> what is 2020 vision? It means right. perfect vision. So to me, there's something very interesting in that. You know, going through a year of all these hardships, all these ups and downs, all these uncertainties, this isolation. How could that be? Wow, 2020 vision. Because sometimes when we are isolated, when we are in those low points, when we have to be in our little be dude, we are actually being forced and pushed to do the most important work. And that's the work of the heart. And the work of the heart is the hardest work to do. But it is the most important. You see, oftentimes we can keep ourselves busy, right? We have zillions of devices and things to keep us busy. We're going, we're doing with this, we have that party, we have this thing, we're organizing. Suddenly everything stops because it's a message to us to say, no, no, the work, the important work has zero to do with out there, has zero to do with your productivity of what you think productivity is. It has to do in here. And that's a work we don't like to do and we don't like to face, you know why? Because it's scary. It is so scary. It forces us to look at ourselves in the mirror and to ask ourselves a question, who is that person looking back at me? Do I like that person? Am I happy with where that person is going? That those are not easy questions to answer. So what do we rather do? We rather busy ourselves with all other external things. So what I would tell you is this, and this isn't easy. Okay, I'm not gonna say this is easy. 
you have an opportunity. Look, life throws us curveballs, right? They throw curveballs our way. We never know what's going to come and when is going to come. But one of the things I always say with my organization, we all have the ability to throw somebody a life vest, a lifeline of kindness. Even though they're surrounded by those troubles, they're surrounded by those waters, they're still staying afloat. Here, we've been given, in a sense, a little bit of a life vest. We've been given a life raft, but only we're sitting in it. We have an opportunity to look at ourselves in the mirror, to ask those questions, and to work on the things that matter. It says, you know, the, the, the biggest reason that we're here on this world is to perfect our character. That's why we're here. That's why we actually are here. You're here to perfect your character. You have an opportunity to close the noise and to, to really work on yourself. Because when you come out of it, you're going to be so much stronger. Like I said, it's not easy. It is not easy. But even if you choose one thing, one thing, one area of your life that you want to work on, and usually it's the thing that's the hardest for you, and taking baby steps, you can have the big dream of where you want to get to, right? But you need to think small. New Year's resolutions never work because they're this, it's like the larger than life dream. Oh yeah, I'm going to exercise. I'm going to eat healthy. What, week one, great. Week uh, two, great. Week three, you, you cheated a little. You forget about, ah, oh, tomorrow, ah, oh, after Shabbat, after this. Because people are generally tend to be all or nothing. But we have to recognize what is life is a balance. Life was balanced in the other direction before, before this crazy year. We were in crazy, we were not focusing on the inside. Now we had to, it had to, in a sense, switch to an extreme so that we can sort of find their way into this middle, into this middle ground. This is incredible advice. Uh, uh, and I, I, I found it, you know, it's not just teens, Daniel. We, we, you posed a question to the teens and students of today. It's really all of us. I mean, I, was, I mean, maybe I'm a teen at heart. I am a teen at heart. It's not maybe. We're all teens at heart. I, 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 I haven't even graduated to, to, to being a teen. I was just saying to Daniel, like, I, in my head, I'm still 16. And I don't know if it's a good thing all the time, but hey, anyways. I um I think that I I, I think it's an incredible advice. Um, oh I want to I, I want to jump to Abraham's legacy because you're doing so much innovation for the world. But I, I have a question beforehand. I have to ask. I'm sorry. Do it. Go ahead. Uh, we'll keep it quick. What what's it like to have a video that has a hundred million views? Because schmooze, most of our schmooze videos have a billion, two billion. But what's it like to? <laughs> um. Um, no, but seriously, like, and what happens afterwards? Do, do, do people like reach out to you? Like, yeah. do you do, I don't know. Did, yeah. What is that I'll like? Tell you, I'll tell you, you know, when I put that video up online, I knew I was meant to make that video. Okay. I had a dream about the video beforehand. I wanted to get out there. I didn't know how I was going to get out. There it was 2011. You understand? It was the very beginning of Twitter. Okay. So viral was just a new coin, like new word that was coined. Like, honestly, that was like something that was just starting to be used. I didn't even know how to upload a video to YouTube, okay? I had to like YouTube how to upload video to YouTube. I had no clue, okay? I, I, I knew I wanted it to get out there because I knew I wanted to make an impact in the world. I knew I wanted it to touch people. And it's crazy how it got, how it went viral within the first, within the first month. And what it's done, first of all, number one, I believe with complete full certainty, this has zero to do with me. I very much believe with anything, thank God, that I've been able to put into the world, I really do believe that I'm a conduit. That's it. So, be, oh, you know, you did it. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything, really. Yes, I executed it, but I really didn't. That's the honest truth. It, there's no, like, magic formula. Oh, I had to do this. or I didn't put marketing out there. Zero. Zero thousand tomorrow. It, 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 I think that it went as viral as it did for several reasons. Number one. Uh, I'm very grateful to Hashem because I know that he was behind that, okay? And it was a message that needed to get out into the world. And I really do believe that what people saw on the screen is they saw themselves. They, they, they saw a representation of themselves. And so it connected in a very big way. I, I, till this day, am amazed at how far the film has reached. Till this day, you know, the first year of the organization, when I started, when I put the film out, I didn't have a website. All I had was a YouTube channel. And for 20 hours of the 24 hours a day, all I was doing was responding to YouTube comments. I still respond to the YouTube comments till today. Thousands of comments coming in a day, connecting with people. That's the thing I love most. I wasn't thinking about it. Oh my God, I, I see, I did a viral video. Like I wasn't really looking at it that, in, in that way. But I, I'm, I'm beyond, beyond grateful because till this day, people reach out 
and share how it's impacted them, how it's changed their life, how it saved their life, how it inspired them to start this organization and that. And I just feel very humbled to be a conduit to have gotten that out there. Uh, so it's very surreal, to be honest. You know, I, 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 it feels like it was just yesterday, but then I'm like, oh my God, that was 2011. And it's still going through these wow. spurts of virility, yeah. And good on. It's incredible. It's inspiring. Danny, you want to wrap us up with one question maybe about Abram's legacy before our time is up? Uh, well, we'll push time this week. There, we'll there's, there's so much. To, yeah. The, but no, I'd, Orly, while you're here, you know, we th thankfully the, uh, this, this week's schmooze is sponsored by Abraham's Legacy. What is Abraham's Legacy? Why should people get involved? I know it's just one of the many projects you're passionate about and spend so much time on. But what, why should people, like, there's so much out there for, for the Jewish community. Why is Abraham's Legacy special and should people get involved? So, uh, oh, I love it. You got the app there. Got it. Awesome. I already got it. I, I, I didn't just download this for the show, everybody. I use this app all the time. You're about to hear about it. So Abraham's Legacy is an app that I put out just about a year ago. Um, it's for iOS and Android in Hebrew, English, Spanish, and French, hopefully soon in Russian. And it really, what, how I really define it, it's a social network for tefillah, focused on the book of Tehillim, the book of Psalms. Now, I'll tell you, before I explain to you the power of this, I just wanna tell you a brief story of how this came about. Also came to me in a dream. I know it sounds weird, but really most of the great ideas have come to me in a dream. And that's why I believe I'm just able to be a conduit. So about six years ago on Pesach, my grandfather fell and he broke his hip. And he had, he had, he had issues with his heart. It was this one act that happened that six months later he passed away. But when he first fell, we oh. thought we lost him right away. We thought we like, that was it. So the family did something we all do in times of distress. We all took the, we took the book of Tehillim and we split it up between his kids, his grandkids, you know, that each of us would read specific perakim every day, specific chapters to complete the book because there's a power in the completion of the sefer. Now I was, I was the one in charge of this. So I was sending out text reminders to everybody. Don't forget that, da, da, da. but I was worried. What if somebody didn't really read their chapters? Who's going to say, oh, I forgot to read for grandpa today. Nobody wants to be that guy. That's like the worst guy to be. You know, so they, maybe they forgot, maybe they got busy. So I, and I said, I don't want the book to not be completed. So I took upon myself to complete the full book myself every day for months. I was reading the full book every single day for months. The miracles, I became like, like a professional Tehillim reader, but the miracles that I saw in these months, beyond, beyond, beyond incredible. There's this one time we were called to rush to the hospital because they thought that was it. My grandpa was gone. We were all hysterical. Like we were not ready to lose him. Like had we lost him that quickly, I think that we would have lost somebody in my family also. Just it, like, it was a very shocking thing for us. And I stood there with my Tehillim book by his side and I was reading Tehillim with every single fiber of my being and just, and, and just crying. And I got to a pasuk. I'll never forget this pasuk. This is what led to Abraham's legacy. It said in the Pasuk, Lo amut ki va'asaper ma'aseya. I will not die, I will live, so I could tell, recount your glories. And I kept saying the Pasuk over and over, and I wouldn't leave it. I was like, Hashem, please, Lo amut, don't let him die. Ki echyeh, let him live. And I promise you, I promise you, I will personally recount these glories. And I kept saying it. Thank God he ended up making it through, and we had him for several more months, okay? I had a dream about this app. I woke up, I only shared it with my mom. I had no idea how I was gonna do it, what I was gonna do, how I was gonna fund it. I didn't have, once he, when he passed, we found in his uh, Koracha, I don't know how you call it, that's like Sephardic word. It's like where you put the tefillin, like you know the tefillin bag, I don't know. It's called a Koracha in, in the Sephardic land. So inside we found in his a tefillin book and I took it out and I opened it and it had a little uh, bookmark and it was bookmarked to that, Pasuk. And I said, you know, Hashem, you actually did fulfill this. He didn't die because a person never really passes. Their neshama, their soul is there for, for eternity. How is he going to live? He's going to live through these words, through by continuing to put out tilim. And I'm going to make sure that I'm going to share the, the, the miracles and the beauty of this sefer that we call tilim. Why is it so amazing, tilim? You know, they say that when we pray, 
we're talking to God. And when we learn Torah, God is talking to us. Tehillim is the only thing that is both in one. Where, where you're, you're praying and you're also being answered. Meaning when you're learning Torah, when you're reading something, God is actually giving you an answer to a question you have right now in your life. That's why the weekly parasha is so important. There's likely something in there that's going to answer a question you're going through right at this exact second. And is there. Tehillim is both of those things. And so I wanted to be able to bring awareness that Tehillim isn't just something we read, but how to actually infuse it into our lives. So what does the app do? It's really spectacular. There are a couple of different features. The, one of them is sort of the power of the group to complete books in splits of a second. You know how they say that if you have uh, money to give to Sedaka, right? Let's say you have $1,000 to give to Sedaka. Is it better to give all 1,000 to one charity or to give, let's say, 100 to 10 charities? What do they say? Right? D differences of opinions, but the, Rob, the Rambam says to 10 different charities because that makes you a more giving person. I yes, see now you're involved. exactly. So now you have the ability by coming once in a day, reading one chapter, and you're definitely going to be part of finishing a book because we're completing tens of books by the day. You come to the app, you click start reading, and the app will generate for you the next chapter in the global count. So if the global counts up to chapter 50, you clicked, you get 51. The next guy gets 52. And you can see in real time, in that second, how many people are reading with you in how many countries. And in real time, you could see the chapters going up, the books being completed. We just hit a thousand books on the global read just uh, just two days ago, which is very exciting. Congratulations, Mazel tov. Yeah, It's been awesome. And then you can also create your own private circle, right? Everybody, when somebody gets sick, what does everyone do? They're creating a WhatsApp group, people writing one, two, three. Then you have to go into an app you have or a book. What kind of craziness? We're living in the 21st century. Here, you just come, you could create a circle with an individualized link that anybody can join, as many people as you want, not just 250. You And you could chat with the members in your circle. You have a leaderboard, who's read the most daily, who's read the most weekly. So it gamifies and incentivizes people to read more. And you don't need to worry about distributing chapters. People could just get a notification. And it does everything for you in a very automated way. You have the full book there. There are many other features that are within the app but it is such a powerful way to connect people from all over the world. I'll tell you, Yaakov Shweki had an event on Passover, okay? At the end of his event, he showed this video that we had, this one minute video. In seconds, there were 750 people on the app. Everybody could see each other on the app from 22 countries. And we completed 22 books at Tehillim in seconds. Wow. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. my gosh. I mean, I can't. crazy. It's it's a it's really a it's it's reminding me of something I once did, which has more of a also a bit of a maybe of a sad uh, connection. One of my students was unfortunately murdered in a terrorist attack in 2015, mm -hmm. and um, we we put together a whole askara like a memorial service for him a week later, exactly a week later, and 2,500 people came. We put it together obviously very quickly. It was a little insane. We had a lot of help from a lot of people, um, and one of the things we did, he was very into Tanakh, and right before he was killed. That day, he said to me, a few hours beforehand, he said to me, my goal this year is to finish the entire Tanakh, and all 929 chapters. And I remember saying to him, I'm like, Ezra, maybe that's a little lofty, baby steps, maybe just, you know, five books of Moses, you know, the, the Chumash. He's like, no, this is what I'm deciding to do. And I'm going to do a few chapters every day, and I'm going to do it. What happened, happened. And then I, I you know, at, at the Askara, I said, you know, we didn't know how many people were coming. I said, you know, what would be crazy? What if we had a thousand people? and every person got a chapter as they came in and we did it and we finished the end within seconds right every single person had had a chat we handed out a chapter in the end it was 2500 people not even everyone got a chapter right i had i had students in california copying to, to all chapters onto a google doc so we could print it and everyone within second within whatever it was you know minutes we finished the entire tanakh 929 chapters when you bring people together when you have community Strength and numbers, you can we we can accomplish infinite times more than we can accomplish on your own. I could, I, uh, I could, and and where we're hoping to bring Abraham's legacy because the mission really is to create technology that enables us to serve Hashem as one. So the Tehili map is just just the beginning, the tip of the iceberg of where okay. we're going with this. Uh, it's it's really exciting, and I, and I did this. It's a it's a free app. It's a Lashem Shemaim project. I did in memory of my grandfather. 
you know, and it's just been, it's, it's been really beautiful. We're now starting a, like an ambassador campaign where people can come on board as Tehillim ambassadors by creating a circle and taking on to pledge, finishing a certain amount of books by Purim, because the concept is we put on our masechot, our masks, last Purim, and we still haven't been able to take them off. And the concept is we're going to use our greatest strength, our call, our voice, Hakol Kol Yaakov, to bust through, bust through the gates of Shemaim to end this pandemic. So people can come on, they can create their groups, they can become an ambassador, and the groups that hit their goal will be entered to win a thousand dollar, a thousand dollar grant to gift to their own organization or to give to any other organization. Wow. Each will receive a free copy of the book Praying with Fire by Rabbi Heshi Kleinman. So this is a campaign yeah. we have going on right now, and people can get involved by by emailing me to uh, info at abrahamslegacy.com to take part in it. Wow. Or really, really below. Yeah. Oh, Dana, take it away. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll put all the info out there, but I, I we now we're we're nearing the end of our show, but I really just, I want to thank you, everyone. Orly Waba, Life Best Inside, Abraham's Legacy. Look into everything she's doing. Follow her YouTube channels. Orly is just an inspiration and innovator in our community. Thank you so much for joining us on the Schmooze. I thank can't you. wait to get involved in all that you're doing. Uh, being a true giver by nature, this is exactly what builds community and why the Jewish people, while it seems like we're hated, are really the envy of the world because only our community can do these things. Only we care this much about connection with our community, with our God. And it's the, thank you so much for bringing that to light, but not thank just for you. us, for our students, but, but to everyone you come into contact with. So thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. I was honored to be here. Take care. Looking forward to the next move. <laughs> wow. Oh, man, I said wow again. I was like, okay, we're not going to say wow because every yeah. show. I, wonder, I just didn't say anything. <laughs> you know, yeah, but that's like an impossible feat for me. Um, Abraham's like I say, everybody, go download it immediately. I honestly, I'm just sitting on a couch sometimes with nothing to do. Doesn't happen that often. I have five children, thank God. But it's just instead of instead of going through Instagram and TikTok and, and wherever else you're going through, you open up Abraham's legacy and you say a paragraph to tell him and you have in mind your neighbor who's going through a hard time or your 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 the person who you know who is unwell or whatever it might be, like Prayer is is a lot better than scrolling through TikTok, right? I, I think there's it's also so powerful that you get to see in real time how many people are are reading, how many books have been read, you know, how many how many different countries have Jews who are reading to Hillam with you. Like yeah. it's when we talk about Jewish unity and and the Jewish people coming together, the app shows you. I, just, I was just thinking that. I was literally just thinking those same words. Small changes, right? Make you just find your niche, like Daniel said at the beginning of the show. Find your niche, find out what it is, and just go. Just do it. Just do it. Again, that's our slogan. We came up with it uh, a few weeks ago. Just do it. Do um, better, Eva. Do better. No, no. You know how I feel about that line. <laughs> Not be do better. It's be better. Be a better person. Because be like me and Daniel, right? Like there's the the epitome of evolution of evolved morality and. I need more. On, Where uh, are you going with this? I'm going I to I I I swoop in and save me. Okay. Um, maybe the aliens will swoop in in 180 days. Um, so last week's question. <laughs> last week's question. You know, you know that aliens are sitting up there and being like, oh, my God, we have six months to figure this one out. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. such a threat. To ourselves. <laughs> we can pose a threat to ourselves in this caliber. Okay. Aliens aside. Last week's question was. Who remembers last week's question? Anyone in the crowd? Anyone in the crowd? Question was, um, no one? Uh, <laughs> question was, uh, you're in college and or in high school and uh, in a secular environment. And the teacher says, hey, guess what? Your test, the upcoming final or test or whatever it is, is on Yom Kippur. It's on Rosh Hashanah. It's on Sukkot. It's on Passover. It's on Shavuot. Whatever it's on, you can't take it. And, and what do you do, right? So, like, the answer isn't, well, Forget Judaism. Let's put college in my career before all my Jewish values. That's not the answer. Um, um, I think that it's a difficult uh, it's, it's a difficult situation to navigate. To be sure, I've, I personally have never been in it. Daniel, have you? No. Have you ever no. Been? Why you? Why you? Um, uh, <laughs> um, and that's why everyone should go to YU or Stern or Landers or Jewish colleges. But if you're not, well, you're I disagree. I disagree. We'll talk about that in another schmooze. But we just yeah. schmooze about that because I disagree with you. Uh, you're no, you're wrong. 
Probably, but I'd still like to disagree with you and schmooze about it. Um, so, uh, so what happens when you're in a situation? I think, listen, at the end of the day, you got to go to the teacher and you got to talk to him or her about that and explain where you're coming from. It's going to be very difficult. Like I, I remember one time I was on a Shabbaton and we were building an A roof so that we could carry on Shabbat. And I'm trying to explain it to these, these poor hotel workers that are trying to help me out with ladders. I'm like, we're building a magic string so we can carry on Saturday. Like it's really a different world. Our Judah, our Judaism, like the concept of like, I can't write today. I can't type today is so foreign. You really have to come with understanding that they don't understand you and come with kindness and understanding. And hopefully they'll be able to like, you know, work some type of solution out. If not, maybe you have to go higher up in the chain in the school. And maybe if not, then uh, maybe you, maybe that's a sacrifice that you have to make. Life, it, life does have sacrifices, and that might be one of them. Hopefully, you won't have to get to that. Like in, in 2021 in America today, you shouldn't have to. That's just how it is. Like we, we, we you, there are there are rights of people in colleges, Jewish people in colleges. Um, unless, of course, for anyone who saw the article today about the uh, college professor, the college assistant, uh, professor's assistant who um, who threatened to not give good grades to uh, anyone who's pro-Israel or Jewish. So, at Johns Hopkins. Yeah. 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 At any college would be a problem, but yeah, John Hopkins, like a recognized, you know, college of repute, university. Right. Um, okay, question for next week is: um, I uh, booked a flight by accident. That's the end of the question. I booked a flight by accident a few months ago, coming back from Israel to California, and I didn't realize that it was on the second day of of of, the, of, of Simchat Torah. Okay, so in Israel, they keep seven days. In America, you keep eight days. And I totally just blanked in it because I keep two days while I'm in America, one day while I'm in Israel. That's what my, my rabbi told us to do. Yeah, that's what my rabbi's psak is. I'm not no judgment. Oh, I, you're clearly judging. You know who wouldn't judge me on that? Aliens. So I booked a flight by accident uh, on that second day. We'd be landing on the second day. So really what you're supposed to do, if that happens to you, is you're supposed to stay in the airport uh, where no one is around. Uh, we just learned about us in Dafiomi for all our Dafiomi followers, um, and uh, and um, and then only once the the Yom Tov is finished, the holiday is finished, are you supposed to leave and go home? And the question is, why? Why do we still keep two days in America and in in Chutzlar? It's anywhere in the world except for Israel. Like we know the calendar, like we know when the actual holiday is. Is there some type of deeper meaning? Curious if anyone has a good answer. If you don't, I do. Tune in next week on the Schmooze and find out. Subscribe and like our videos on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, please. And uh, oh, that please sounds too desperate. Please. Um, and uh, but we are loving the fact that so far every single show has had an increase in viewership, and that is fantastic. And we love you guys, and you're the best, and our aliens are the best too. You can wrap you're, it up. You're going, you you almost had it. You were really going. I'm this way. Whatever. You don't even know how many aliens are watching the show. No, you don't. So we have to include everybody. We're, we're going to have a serious talk about this offline. But it's been a great schmooze with you, Rabbi Akiva, with all of you, our viewers. Thank you to Orly Waba and Abraham's Legacy for coming on and sponsoring. And we cannot wait till uh, next week and future schmoozing. Have a great week.